Alright guys, let's... Let's do top seven will action of innocent convicted set free. Customize and save Liberty Mutual. Fitzpatrick and Mastriano both want to ban abortion. Choice is on the ballot. If elected, they will take Congress away. This is John Buck. He spent 27 years wrongfully convicted of murder. I'm an innocent man, Your Honor, and I have always been an innocent man. While living in Brooklyn, New York, Bun was only 14 years old when he was arrested by NYPD detective Louis Scarcella. Bun later spent 16 years behind bars and then 11 years out on parole, where he still fought to prove his innocence. Then finally, his conviction was overturned based on the wrongdoing of Detective Scarcella and the fact that there wasn't even probable cause to arrest one in the first place. I want y'all to know that y'all convicted and had a wrong man in prison. And after 27 years of fighting to clear his name, he is finally exonerated. Thank you, Because in 27 years, I've been fighting for my life. But before he leaves the courtroom, he has a moment with the judge. Bun later filed a lawsuit against the city of New York and Detective Scarcella. This is David Ranta. He spent 22 years behind bars for a murder he did not commit. In Brooklyn, New York, Ranta was arrested by Detective Louis Scarcella. Yes, this is another wrongful conviction that's connected to Scarcella. Ranta was put in a police lineup run by Scarcella and was identified as the shooter. But decades later, reportedly, the key witness revealed that the detective had provided him with a description of whom to pick in the lineup. There was no physical evidence linking Ranta to the killing, and the evidence presented to the jury was allegedly fabricated. Ranta was then convicted and sentenced to 37 and a half years to life in prison. But after wow two decades in prison the former witnesses admitted that they were pressured into testifying against ranta and now this is the moment his conviction gets thrown out mr brenda to say that i'm sorry for what you have endured would be an understatement and grossly inadequate but i say it to you anyway the defendant's motion to vacate the judgment of conviction is granted <laughs> After his handcuffs were removed, he hugged his family. With all he owned thrown over his back, he walks out a free man. After his release, he reportedly received $2 million from the state and a $6.4 million settlement from the city of New York. This is Susan Mellon. She was sentenced to life in prison without parole based on an untruthful testimony. She was 42 years old when she was arrested in Los Angeles, California at a McDonald's while taking her daughter to get a Happy Meal. But that was the last time she would see her child for seven years as she was charged for the murder of an ex-boyfriend. You were under arrest now for murder. <laughs> Mellon's conviction was based solely on an informant who claimed that Mellon had confessed the killing to her. She was in prison for a total of 17 years until the informant was proven to be a pathological liar and an unreliable witness. And now, this is the moment that Mellon's case is finally overturned. The judgment is vacated, the conviction overturned, and as to Ms. Mellon, the case is dismissed. From tears in one moment to jumping in joy the next. When released, Mellon took her daughter to McDonald's to deliver that long-awaited happy meal. The state of California awarded Mellon $597,000 in compensation, and reportedly, the Los Angeles City Council agreed to pay $12 million to Susan Mellon. This is Luis Vargas. He was sentenced to 55 years to life for crimes he did not commit. Vargas was 29, living in Los Angeles, California, when he was charged with three sexual assaults. 
Based on the similar descriptions of these crimes, police concluded that it was the same person that committed all three attacks. Vargas was later convicted on all counts, and he spent a total of 16 years in prison until the California Innocence Project tested DNA on the remaining physical evidence and clothing from one of the victims. And it was not a match, proving that Vargas did not commit these crimes. Vargas sat silently when he was exonerated from all crimes. Vargas only had one simple wish from his mother for when he would become a free man. Please buy me a big hamburger and we eat it together. <laughs> Reportedly, after Vargas was exonerated, he received $886,000 in state compensation. Choose America's News now. Morning 6 to 9 on the CW Central PA. We'll make this ad quick so you can go get 20% off the entire Domino's menu when you order online. This is Daniel Villegas. He spent 18 years in prison for a double homicide he never committed. In El Paso, Texas, Villegas was arrested at 16, where an El Paso detective reportedly threatened him with beatings and the death penalty if he did not confess. And the teenage Villegas signed a confession that was prepared by the detectives. He tried to withdraw his confession a few hours after, but by then it was too late. He was charged with two counts of capital murder. With the false confession being the only piece of evidence, the jury was unable to agree on a verdict. Villegas had a retrial, and the jury returned a guilty verdict, and he was given a life sentence. After spending 18 years in prison, the verdict was thrown out. What are you doing, Pumpkin? One where he got married and started a family. But now, we're in the third trial. If the defendant will please stand. This is the moment that Villegas will find out if he'll go home with his family or be sent back to prison to serve his life sentence. The state of Texas versus Daniel Villegas. Verdict form B. We, the jury, find the defendant Daniel Villegas not guilty of... <laughs> Reportedly, Villegas has filed a lawsuit against the city of El Paso. This is Ricky Jackson. He spent over 39 years in prison for a murder he did not commit. Jackson was arrested at 18 years old, living in Cleveland, Ohio. The main witness in the case was a 12-year-old kid named Eddie Vernon, who in fact didn't see anything. And he said the police did pressure him into testifying against Jackson which then later led to his conviction. Jackson initially was sentenced to die in the electric chair, but after spending two years on death row, his death sentence was reduced to life in prison. Nearly four decades later, the now 52-year-old Eddie Vernon came forward with the truth, stating that he never saw the murder happen. Charges against Jackson were then dropped, and after being wrongfully imprisoned for 39 years, this is the moment that Jackson hears that he is free to go. Mr. Jackson, you're going to be free to go. Life is filled with uh, small victories. This is a big one. I wish you good luck. Thank you. All right. Jackson is now outside for the first time as a free man. Jackson received $1 million in compensation from the state and an additional $2.65 million for lost income. This is Kirsten Lobato. She served 16 years in prison for a murder she did not commit. At 18 years old, she was charged with the brutal murder of a homeless man in Las Vegas. She was first convicted of first degree murder, but on a retrial, she was convicted on the lesser charges of voluntary manslaughter and sentenced to 13 to 45 years. And after spending 16 years behind bars, a new hearing was presented with evidence that confirmed the actual day of the victim's death was when Lobato was three hours away with her family, proving that Lobato could not have possibly committed these crimes. This is Lobato outside for the first time as a free woman. I feel overwhelmed. I feel excited. I feel grateful. I'm just, I'm so happy. Lobato has filed a lawsuit against the Las Vegas Police Department, and her compensation claim is ongoing. 
Alright guys, I'll see you See you in my last video, so I'll see you then.